Superconductivity is characterized by the complete ejection of magnetic field lines from the interior of the superconductor as it moves into the superconducting state. There are mathematical theories to explain superconductivity, but these theories describe some of the effects of superconductivity without giving us an objective explanation of these effects that exist within the conventional understanding of physics. Superconductivity does not just create levitation defying the gravitational pull of the whole Earth. There are forces of attraction called magnetic pinning locking the two objects together. As the temperature approaches absolute zero, the entropy reaches its minimum value. It is as though they are frozen in time within their own reference frame. Because superconductivity is formed by the dynamics of quantum mechanics, we need a deeper understanding of quantum physics to explain this. To explain why the complete collapse of magnetic field lines cause such a spectacular effect, causing the annihilation of gravity in the reference frame of the experiment. One explanation is that gravity is a secondary force to the electromagnetic force. Because the light photon of quantum mechanics is the carrier of the electromagnetic force, this could link gravity and quantum physics, giving us what we could call quantum gravity. This is exactly the process that is explained in a new theory called quantum atom theory. In this theory, Newton's apple does not fall to the ground because of the downward force of gravity, but because of the upward momentum of electromagnetic radiation or light. Gravity is not a real force at all. It is a secondary force to the electromagnetic force. Objects just free fall towards the greatest energy because it has the slowest rate of time or the greatest time dilation. I believe this can be seen in the mathematics with both the gravitational force and the electromagnetic force having the inverse square law. We have the inverse square law because the surface area of the light sphere increases with the square of the radius. Thus the strength of the gravitational field is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source. There is no mysterious action at a distance. The gravitational field will work at the speed of light because it is an integral part of one universal process with the electromagnetic force. We have one universal process that begins with the quantum wave particle function or probability function of quantum mechanics expanding out as an inverse sphere and ends with the inverse square law of gravity and Newton's third law of motion. To every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Gravity is the opposite reaction to the atoms radiating quantized spherical wavefronts of electromagnetic radiation. We have one interactive universal process continuously unfolding at the quantum level of the atoms. We see and feel this process as time, as a physical process of continuous energy exchange that is formed light photon oscillation by light photon oscillation. Objects form their own time by slowing up the rate that time flows relative to their energy and momentum. Gravity is not a real force at all. Objects just free fall towards the greatest energy because it has the greatest time dilation or the slowest rate the time flows. In this theory, mass is a byproduct of time dilation. When time slows down, it takes more effort to move an object from A to B, and this is seen as an increase in mass. Also, Einstein's equivalence principle between gravity and acceleration falls out of this theory, because energy and momentum have to increase for an object to accelerate, time dilation will increase relative to the acceleration. Therefore we have the equivalence principle between gravity and acceleration. This will be felt as inertia in the direction of the acceleration. Therefore we have Isaac Newton's first law of motion. 
unless acted upon by a net unbalanced force an object will maintain a constant velocity. This theory takes the dynamic interactive process of the general theory of relativity and extends it to our everyday life explaining a universe that is continuously coming into existence relative to the energy and momentum of our own actions. Every individual is a part of this interactive process that forms the uncertainty and probability that is needed for the great game of life. But above all this theory gives us an objective understanding of time as a process of continuous creation. Even a rose blooming will create its own arrow of time within its own reference frame. This fits in with the reality of our everyday life, with a past and potential future that we can interact with from the centre of our own reference frame, turning the possible into the actual. This can be in the form of art and poetry. Therefore, even a dancer on the dance floor will interact with this process, forming their own future space-time relative to their energy and momentum of their own actions. In this theory, creation is truly in the hand and eye of the beholder. Thanks for watching. Please rate and subscribe. It will help in the promotion of this theory.